activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Why don't you ask for the empowerment of Holy Spirit in your life? Well, how does that happen? Well, first of all, you have to have a ministry. You have to know that you have a ministry in your life. They know. They saw what they were supposed to do. Christ had commissioned them. Go into all the world, preaching the gospel, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And and they knew what their calling was. So they had a ministry to accomplish. You have to know that you have a ministry, you have a calling, something that God wants to do in and through your life. They understood what it was that they were supposed to be doing. They delineated it in this passage. Lord, consider their threats and give us the the, the power to speak with boldness, to stretch uh, out our hands and heal and perform miraculous signs through the name of Jesus. They knew what they were supposed to be doing. They knew what their ministry was. Part of the reason so many Christians fail in their walk with Christ is because they don't know what their ministry is. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, then how do you pray? How do you know what to pray for? So first of all, you have to seek that ministry. What is it that God is wanting to do in and through your life? And he reveals that through, your, your, through spiritual gifts, I believe, through circumstances in your life, circumstances he puts in your life where you are in a place to minister and and, uh, connect with people. Sometimes you just know this is exactly what God's called me to do. But you cannot do it unless you are empowered by Holy Spirit. I will tell you that it is normal for the Christian to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not abnormal. It's normal. It's abnormal for the Christian to not be empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you are not living your life empowered by the Holy Spirit, you're an abnormal Christian. Because it's normal to have the power of Holy Spirit in your life. It's not something that you should hide or be ashamed of in any way, shape, or form. I will tell you, I am empowered right now by Holy Spirit. I don't get up and teach unless the Holy Spirit is, 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 is moving in my life. I just don't do it. Because I don't have the strength and power to do it. I just simply don't. I, I mean, I, I can get up and look pretty, but that doesn't really do a whole lot of, of what God wants to do. He wants to work in lives through the, his word. And the only way that the word can be shared such a way is for the Holy Spirit to be in control. And you get prayed for. This room gets prayed for. I mean, there, you know, we just seek the empowerment of Holy Spirit I think that's one of the reasons why why God brings clarity through some of the teaching is that the Holy Spirit is at work making it real, making it come alive. And we need to live our lives that way on a day-by-day-by-day-by-day basis. When you go to work tomorrow, you need to be empowered by Holy Spirit. I mean, the first thing that you need to do in the morning is just say, God, Confess your sins, get things right with him, and let the Holy Spirit come in and move and work in your life. Ask him to come in to do what it is that he wants to do in and through your life. Because how are you going to do it empowered and and successfully if you don't have Holy Spirit at work in your life? You just can't. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us that power and that authority to do those things that we need to do on a day-by-day basis. The disciples, the early disciples felt threatened they were afraid they knew they needed boldness but it wasn't something that they could conjure up and so God took care of that he filled them with Holy Spirit and when Holy Spirit comes into your life God takes over and they spoke with boldness the very thing that they needed they knew they needed it God gave God ministered God blessed and they spoke with boldness. The number one command in the Bible, by the way, is do not be afraid. It's the number one command in the Bible. The only way that we can obey that command is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. Boldness or courage, if if you prefer to use that word, is not the absence of fear. Boldness is not the absence of fear. Boldness is the control of fear. And that's what Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit is the one who controls your fear. It's not that you won't be afraid, but that your fear will be managed. It will be controlled. So that's what Holy Spirit does, and that's what happened in Peter's life. He was trying to live his life without the power of Holy Spirit. 
I'll follow you everywhere, God. I'll do whatever I have to take. And we've all made those commitments before in our life. I'm committing my, my life to you, Christ. I will follow you no matter where. Whatever you say, I'll do it. Just whatever. You just tell me and I'll follow. And so we say those things, but we can't accomplish them until we have been empowered by Holy Spirit. So are you, the Apostle Peter, before the Holy Spirit or after? That's your choice to make. That's your choice to make as a believer. Acts 1.8 says it this way. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What that verse is also saying is that you don't have power until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You're acting in your own strength if the Holy Spirit hasn't come on you. If the Holy Spirit isn't in and active and alive, working in and through your life, you're acting on your own. But once you receive the Holy Spirit, that power comes upon you. Once the Holy Spirit is in control of your life, you have power, and you will be witnesses. You will accomplish your ministry in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. Listen, God put you on this earth to accomplish something. But he didn't just say, okay, go do it. He said, I've designed you to contain Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is the power within you to accomplish what I want to accomplish. I, uh, we got Owen, my, my two-year-old grandson, a battery-powered remote control car because it's cool. Every two-year-old should have a remote-controlled car that his daddy can play with. <laughs> and I wanted, you know, I was just so excited about getting this car because, you know, I always thought they were so cool, you know. I still do. And so um, I got it out of the, the box and I put the batteries in it because I you know, wanted to make sure that it was ready to go. Put the batteries in it, put it back in, and somehow or other when I put it back in, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but I put the batteries in backwards. <laughs> and so he opened his, his present and opened it, and, and it wouldn't work. And I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, after all that anticipation, and it doesn't work. Come on. Until we figured out that the batteries were backwards, and it worked fine, and he wrecked it within... He destroyed it within three minutes, but, you know, that's, that's another story. But I thought to myself, I was thinking, you know, first of all, we need that power in our lives. We, we have to have that power in our lives, just like that little car had to have a battery in it. We have to have the power that's, that's a, an external source, if you will. The car couldn't power itself. It needed a battery. And when it didn't work, Everybody was disappointed. Do you realize when you're not empowered by Holy Spirit, God is disappointed? Because God anticipates. God's, God is looking forward to letting Holy Spirit work in and through your life. You're designed to be used by Holy Spirit. You're designed to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. God designed you that way, to be a vessel of Holy Spirit that will stand and, and speak boldly and accomplish what it is that God wants to accomplish. And when it doesn't work, not only are you disappointed, but God is disappointed. So you make a choice. Today, maybe tomorrow as you head to work, you make that choice to be empowered or not, to ask Holy Spirit to come into your life. How do you do that? Here's how I do it. I pray. I make sure that my sins are confessed, that I'm right with God, and then I just ask God to fill me with his presence. Does something magical happen? No. Do I get all gushy and weird? And No. I mean, I'm weird enough as it is. Why would God make me any weirder? No. It's just something that all of a sudden I recognize that I have this power that's in me because God said so. And if God said it, I can believe it. 
And God accomplishes what he wants to accomplish. And it's then that I see those divine appointments happen. And then that I see that God uh, uses things that he wants to do in and through my life to connect with other people. That's what God does when the Holy Spirit is at work. Let's pray. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the